Alright guys, um, ignore the hair. Before this video starts, I wanted to say that um, I found a new setting on this microphone that I've had for a long time, uh, about halfway through the video. So uh, the audio is going to improve greatly about a minute after this video. Um, I'm doing all my effects and stuff afterwards. But um, yeah, just, just keep that in mind, enjoy the video, I'm not going to steal any more of your time, let's just get started. Hi fellow Blender user, it's me, Blender Sponge, aka Robert McCoy, the face behind the sponge. Now first, it would be best if you subscribed, as we are trying to get to 1000 subscribers by the end of this year, and we just hit 800 at the time of recording this video. Now let's talk about compositing. Now the compositor can seem pretty daunting to new Blender users or even intermediate users, but I am here today to help you understand the basics of the compositor in Blender. Now the easiest way to access the compositor in Blender is to click the little compositing tab near the top of the screen. From here Blender will bring you all your compositing needs. This is way faster than splitting the screen up and trying to make the compositor set up by yourself, and it automatically enables some settings that you would have to manually enable if you are to split the screen up by yourself. Before we do anything with the compositor, let's first click Use Nodes. Now as you can see, the compositor doesn't look too different from the material node editor that we use to create our textures in Blender. This brings me to the most simple way I can describe the compositor, which is the compositor at its base is like a node editor for the output of your render. So the compositor is used to add cool effects to your render that make it look more appealing to the audience or just make it look better in general. Today we're going to change the brightness of this default cube render and have the compositor apply the changes we made to our render. Now first, just like the material node editor, we'll start by hitting shift plus A to pull up a list of nodes that we can add to the compositor. From there we can either go to filters and then brightness and contrast, or we can just search it up in the top. Now that we have our brightness and contrast node, let's put it in between the render layer node and the composite node. The render layer node is going to act as an input for our compositor as it is going to input the render that we made without any effects added on. The composite node is going to act as an output and make sure Blender applies the effects that we will add. Let's turn up the brightness just a little so we can have a visible difference in our render and then render the image again. Now when we get our render preview, we can see that our render is brighter because of the effects that we applied in the compositor. Keep in mind that Blender renders the basic image and then applies the compositor effects onto the image afterwards, so if you don't like the compositing effects, you can always go back to the original render and change it afterwards. So if you have like a big project you're working on, you might be wondering how to quickly adjust the compositor settings without having to re-render every time. The answer is the viewer node. Now the viewer node gives us a preview of what our compositor is going to output, and it is super useful. Here, check this out. Think of the viewer node like a window into the future that lets you see what your render will look like after the effects are applied to your render. So if you have the node wrangler add-on, you can simply click on the most recent node that you added and then hit control, shift, and then left click to add the viewer node. If you don't have it, you can just search it and then type in viewer node and add the viewer node into the compositor. Now if we change the brightness of the brightness and contrast node, Blender sends the original image through the compositor again and applies the new compositor effect without having to re-render the image. Now to get these effects in the render node, we can re-render and then they're going to be applied. Let's move on to some simple frequently asked questions that I had while using the compositor for the first time. Number 1. What specifically are the composite node and viewer node used for? Well, the composite node acts as an output node for your render. If you attempt to render an image or animation without anything connecting into the composite node, your render will end up black. Which is very unfortunate because Blender calculates the whole render and then it applies the effects, so um, I would really recommend double checking that you have that attached there. The viewer node lets the user preview the effects that they're going to apply beforehand, so when they do another test render or a final render, they won't be surprised by what they get. Number 2. How do I move the preview of my render? I had lots of trouble with this one when I first started. Now it is simple in Blender 2.8 and up because there is a fancy little view tab on the right side of your compositor if you hit N, which allows you to reset the image to the center, scale the image, and even move it around if you want to. Number 3. How does compositing work for animation? Compositing can work perfectly for animation given that it applies all effects to individual frames and then exports your image into your animation. Each frame has the effect you specified and the compositor can even be animated with keyframes so you can toggle and adjust effects while you're rendering. So now that you know how to use the compositor, I would recommend hopping in the compositor, playing around with some effects, looking at more videos, 
doesn't have to be Blender Dojo videos, but it helps. And just seeing what the compositor can do, because the compositor can make your scene look like garbage, it can make your scene look amazing, and it all has to do with how you apply the effects, in what order the effects are applied, and um, how you use it. So today I taught you how to make your image brighter, you can also do a whole bunch of other things with the compositor. I'm excited to do more compositing tutorials because it's something I've really been getting into recently and uh, I have to do less work on my render and it still looks just as good. So um, that's, that's, that's about it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll leave the Instagram, ArtStation, all that good stuff down in the description. You might want to check me out on it. And uh, yeah, everybody have a good day.